So welcome today. I'm going to be talking about tension in playing the violin, how to relieve tension in your life and your music making, how to dramatically improve your violin technique, overcome performance anxiety, lessen your pain, overcome pain, basically how to become a happier, better violinist using a hands-free Alexander technique, and specifically how I teach the Alexander Technique in the context of what I call the Art of Freedom Method for conscious living and masterful artistry. I know that's a tall order. I'm promising a lot here, but I guarantee that I am not making this up. It works. I am a professional violinist and a double certified Alexander Technique teacher with more than six years of additional training in Primal Alexander, which is a unique hands-free method of delivering the Alexander Technique. So you may have no idea what the Alexander Technique is. In fact, I would love to see if you know what it is. Put a yes in the comments. If you don't know what Alexander Technique is, you've never heard of it, maybe put a no or you know just the letter N. I'm just curious how many of you out there have even heard of the Alexander Technique? Because a lot of people haven't, even though it's... It, I don't know, it's like the best kept secret in the world that I wish weren't a secret because everybody should know about the Alexander Technique. I'm seeing some yeses, great, that's wonderful. Okay, so just really briefly, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself since I know many of you are new to my work. You have no idea who I am, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but just so you know, I am, like I said, I'm a professional violinist. I've been performing basically all my life. I've had the great fortune to study with some of the best violinists of the world, like Nathan Milstein, Joseph Gingold. I've won international competitions. I've been a soloist with the Berlin Symphony Orchestra, the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Played at Carnegie Hall four or five times. Um, basically, I've done a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be bragging here, but I want you to know that I'm speaking from a certain level of experience. Um, I kind of know what I'm doing. You can hear my violin playing on YouTube if you want. Um, I just put out a new CD. It's on my website if you're curious. So anyway, I have a, an in-depth violin background, but I've actually devoted more of my life, time, energy, um, interest in the last... Since 2003, actually, I've been practicing the Alexander Technique. And um, it's what I love because it has helped me with my violin playing so dramatically. Um, I, was, I was a good violinist when I was a kid, a teenager, talented, all that. But I always felt like something was missing, like something, something elusive that I just couldn't figure out. And I knew that... No matter how many hours I practiced, I just wasn't, I didn't, there was something missing that none of these violinists, Nathan Milstein couldn't, actually, he was not, a, he was one of the best violinists of all time, and he was my idol growing up, and I was so lucky to study with him for five summers in Switzerland, but he was actually not such a great teacher. Basically, if you could imitate and do what he wanted you to do on the spot, then, then you would learn and he liked you. <laughs> but he couldn't really explain, at least not when I was there. I did not see him really explaining how to get the kind of violin technique that he had, for example. Um, I know there are some people that he taught privately that might disagree with me, but for five summers in his master classes, I did not see him giving much technical information. And if somebody didn't already have it, if they didn't already have the natural aptitude that he needed to build on, he couldn't help you get there. So I'm saying this because, and I'll just add on to that because I mentioned Joseph Gingle. Also, one of the great violin pedagogues of all time, Joseph Gingle was my teacher at Indiana University for a couple of years. And basically I would go in every week with a different concerto, you know, different movement, different piece to play. He would praise me, say really wonderful musical things, give me lots of ideas, but then he'd sit me down in a chair and tell me stories. He didn't help me at all 
with my technique or very, very little. And yes, he was already up in years at that point. And I'm sure he was teaching differently um, at that age than he had been before. So I'm not saying this is how he taught always, but, and maybe this was just with me, I don't know. But he didn't give me much technical information to help me progress with my technique. Like basically nothing. I felt like I was on my own. <laughs> so <laughs> that wasn't too great because even though I played at a very high level, I knew something was missing said before. And it was very frustrating. So some of you out there are, are professionals. Some of you are beginner amateurs. Basically, if you're a violinist and you're here and you want to learn how to improve your technique because you have a suspicion that there's too much tension that you bring to your instrument, you are in the right place. Because that is what I learned when I found the Alexander Technique. And it was totally revolutionary to my violin playing, but not just that, to my entire life. Because when I found the Alexander Technique, I was, it was demonstrated to me that I was carrying around far too much tension in my mind, in my body, in my soul, in my emotions. There was just too much tension in my entire system. But here's the catch. I wasn't even aware of it until I started taking Alexander lessons. I knew that I had, I knew that something was missing. I had no idea it had anything to do with having too much tension in my system. I was not aware at all that I brought too much tension to my violin playing. I played with a lot of ease, I thought. It was easy for me to play the violin at a pretty high level because I devoted my whole life to it and I was, you know, lucky. <laughs> you know, it came pretty easily. But I, but I found with those lessons, I was shown. It was like plain as day. When my teacher started working with me, layers of tension started to melt away that I didn't even know were there. So I'm just here, I'm, to tell, I'm here to tell you that everybody on this planet carries around more tension than they're aware of. Maybe not everybody, but maybe 99.99% of people. I do believe there are a few very special people in the world that don't have that, but that's extremely rare. And you can, I mean, I could even look at, I could watch a YouTube video of some of the top violinists in the world right now and I can point out their excess tension because I have learned how to identify that in myself and through many years of training I can see it in other violinists even those at the top of their profession I'm sure you, you could throw out a, a name of a top violinist in the world and I can show you that they have more tension than necessary now that doesn't mean they're not playing like gods and goddesses, right? <laughs> they are amazing violin players. But imagine if they could become, in, if they could get in touch with that extra layer of tension that they don't know they have, and they could find a way, if I can show them, it's actually very easy, believe it or not, if I could show them how they are thinking in such a way that causes interference with total freedom and ease in their playing, then they would be playing at a level that has not, it's, it's just almost unimaginable how some of those people could play if they were able to let go of that extra excess tension. So um, I'm going to, I'm actually able to see the comments today, although unless you put your name, if you, there is a way to go to um, the beginning of this video, like maybe on Facebook, you have to click again or something and you should see an invitation to put your name in because I'm using something called Ecamm and I can't see your names unless you give Ecamm permission or unless you put it in the chat but um, I'm looking it up now on my phone so that I can see what you're all saying. First of all I'm very happy that I'm getting your comments. Wonderful. Oh and actually you're in my 
Facebook group so I can see your names on the phone. Hallelujah. So I want to just welcome you, Christina, Carol Ann, Vicky Zamba, Kay. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I would love to chat with, you know, all of you as you come on here. Um, so, yeah, top violinist. I'm not going to name any names like who I was alluding to, but I guarantee just about everybody um, you have ever heard of has more tension than necessary when they're playing. So anyway, just really briefly, because I do know that some of you are clueless. You have no idea about what I'm talking about when I mention the Alexander Technique. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about this, but I do want you to know basically what it is. Alexander Technique has been around since the end of the 1800s. You know, it's been around for much more than a century. Um, there was a, a man in Australia, born in Tasmania, named Frederick Matthias Alexander, who was an actor and started having performance problems when he went on stage to recite. He had vocal issues. So thanks to Alexander, thanks for his years of investigation, self-observation, experimentation, thanks to the fact that he figured out what he was doing to himself to create overall excess tension that interfered with his performance, and thanks to the fact that he was able to figure out how to let go of that and recite and perform and express himself freely, we now have this wonderful method called the Alexander Technique, which is all about learning to recognize that excess tension that we're not aware of unless you know, we have ways to check in with ourselves and observe ourselves in specific ways that I teach. It's very, very, very simple. Um, in fact, right now, <laughs> I could even probably show you. If you right now, just pause for a moment and look away from the screen for a moment. Come back to yourself. Become present to your experience of your own body. Ask yourself right now, what am I noticing about my body? What is showing up for me? Nine times out of 10, when people do that, and this may be the case for you right now, when you come back and ask yourself, what am I noticing about my body right now? Nine times out of 10, the person's gonna notice a little bit of tension somewhere, a little bit of, not disease, unless there you have disease, which is possible, I hope you don't, but. Um, you might notice some dis-ease, meaning lack of ease or discomfort, right? You might notice a little bit of pain or just like a place that's, that's not, doesn't feel quite perfect, right? Completely comfortable. If you're noticing any kind of tension or pain or discomfort in your body, no matter how small it is right now, I would love it. It would be so interesting to get a whole list of the things that you're all noticing. If you could just put into the chat the body part, just name the body part where your body is speaking to you and saying hello with a little bit of tension or um, maybe some pain. What's showing up for you right now? So I'm gonna give you a moment to type that in. I'm just gonna talk about how most of the time something like that shows up, not all the time, but very often when you check in with your body, you'll learn something you'll discover something you might not have been noticing before. So here I'm looking at the chat. We have Michelle, hi. Um, you've got a left forearm showing up. Tracy, upper back. There's a left shoulder and jaw, shoulders, upper shoulders, into the base of the neck. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about? As soon as you pay attention and you get curious, Cindy says neck, great. As soon as you start getting curious about what's going on in your body, you start actually listening to your body, paying attention, it will give you information, okay? And very often, the first thing it wants to tell you is, hey, there's something that's not quite right here right now. So actually pain, Alexander said pain is your friend. I know that's hard to, be, hard to believe, but if you can open up your mind to the possibility that there's a different way of thinking about pain, and maybe pain is just, and, and it doesn't even have to be pain. Today we're talking about tension. They're very related. But 
tension or pain is just your innocent body. There's nothing wrong with your body. Your body is simply giving you a little information, suggesting to you that, hey, hello up there. Hello up there. You need to think a little differently so we can get some different results down there because we're feeling a little uncomfortable down here. That's actually what your body's doing. It's sending actual messages through your nervous system up to your brain and your brain is interpreting those signals. Now, if you tend to think of tension as bad, I bet you're all thinking, oh, I wish I didn't have this neck pain, pain, tension right now. I wish Jennifer hadn't made me notice that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Don't blame me, it was there anyway. It's better to notice it because then it's on its way out and you can actually do something about it. And that's what I'm here to, to share with you. You can do something about your tension, but first you have to notice it. First you have to listen to it, pay attention to it, but then it's up to you to interpret it in a way that tells you, oh, this is bad, let's get rid of it, we need to fix this, we need to do something. That's the old habitual way, and it doesn't work. So if you have pain or tension, you're a violinist, you wanna get rid of it, I bet, I'd be willing to bet money <laughs> that you have tension when you play the violin and you've been trying to get rid of that shoulder tension, that jaw tension, that gripping wrist, the finger tension, the arm tension, the wrist tension. You've been trying to get rid of your problem spots, problem tension areas when you play your violin for probably as long as you've been playing, whether that's been five days or 30 years or more in my case, right? <laughs> depending on how old you are, right? I've been playing since I was four, so you can figure it out. I'm 51, that's a long time. And my whole life, I've noticed little tension areas creeping in, but I didn't know what to do about them until I found the Alexander Technique. And to be totally honest, I didn't really know what to do about them until I found hands-free Primal Alexander. And I'll get to a little more about why with that in a little bit. Okay, but first we're just talking about Alexander Technique and it's a way to notice the tension that's in you, to observe it, get to know yourself a little better, listen to your body, pay attention to what your body is saying instead of trying to change it or deny it, run away from it, ignore it, push through the pain, keep practicing even when something hurts. Don't do that because you're just reinforcing the tension habit and you're gonna get really good at playing with tension because you get better at what you practice, right? So instead, you can notice the tension, it's messages coming up to your brain. Say, like, oh, hello pain, hello tension, hello discomfort. That's really interesting. I wonder, and if you can open up to wondering and being curious about what your body is trying to tell you and Imagine that your body is simply saying, hello, maybe you could think a little differently to get different results. Because truly, what you think is what you get. What you think in your mind is what you're creating in your body. Your body is only reflecting what's going on in your mind. We all know this, but we don't think about it. If you're angry, you're thinking angry thoughts, you get tight, right? You get tense. If you're thinking, that you're not a very good violinist and you're worried about the performance and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what if I mess up and everybody's gonna see and hear me mess up? If you think that way, what happens to your body? You shrink, you're trying to hide. So if you think that way, you get more tension. All kinds of what we call negative thinking, thoughts about ourselves, thoughts about potential negative future outcomes, all those thoughts, that clutter in the brain, translates into increased tension in the body. Okay, so I promised when I advertised this video, I was gonna to talk to you about, I was gonna share with you why or how tension is related to performance anxiety. I kind of just did that, right? If you're thinking certain thoughts about a performance, basically performance anxiety is um, projecting a potential negative outcome into the future. If you're thinking that way, you're gonna increase the tension in your body. When you increase the tension in your body, you get tense, right? And anxiety is free to build, right? And 
also, if you increase tension in your thinking, in your body, that is, it makes you more prone to injury. Pain is totally related to how we think. And it is possible to think differently to let go of the performance anxiety. And it is possible to think differently to let go of the tension that exacerbates pain, causes pain, and prevents healing from occurring and slows it down. I also talked, I wanted to talk to you about why the tension in your shoulders, your neck, your, your arms, all that violin tension, why, if you're aware of it and you relax your shoulder, does it come back in a few minutes? I'm, all right. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're playing your violin. You know there's too much tension in your wrist or your shoulder or your jaw. So you relax your wrist, your shoulder, or your jaw, but it comes back. Put a yes into the comments if you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? It comes back. And maybe it doesn't come back in a few minutes. Maybe you enjoy the rest of your practice session unaware of the tension in your body, or maybe there's a little less and it doesn't bother you. But what about tomorrow? What about next week? And what about if you're, if you have a teacher, you go back to your teacher. How many times has your teacher told you you have too much tension in your left hand, too much tension in your bow arm, too much tension in your shoulders, there's too much tension in your neck? How many times have you heard that? If you're a professional and you don't go to a teacher, can you remember how many times you went to your lessons? I remember my teacher saying the same thing over and over again. Why does the tension keep coming back? Here's why because you have a wrong belief about your tension. And so does your teacher, frankly. We've been taught to think that tension is housed in a certain part of your body. It's not, that's just where it shows up. That's not the origin of your tension. The origin of your tension is in your mind. It is in your brain. It is in the physical reality of the neural network in your brain. How you think, how those neurons fire and wire together translates into, it, it travels through the, neuro, the neuromuscular system and it literally creates muscular contraction, tension. But it shows up in your shoulder. It shows up in squeezing. It shows up in a stiff bow arm. It shows up in not being able to play those octaves consistently in tune. It shows up in making slow prog progress with your technique, but that's not the origin of it. That's the origin of your physical tension is not physical. It's not, well, it's, it's physical, it's neurons, right? It is physical, but the origin is actually in your mind. You cannot separate the mind and the body. And this is one of the basic principles of the Alexander technique. So am I making sense so far? I'm just going to pause for a moment and look at the, the um, comments here. I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Okay. I feel like yeah, we're on the same page here. Um, Zamba. Oh, I love how you, oh, you've got a lot of good stuff here. Wonderful. Excellent. Good. Yes. Okay. I'm getting a lot of yeses. I know we're on the same page. <laughs> Yes, great. And by the way, if you have any questions um, as I'm speaking, feel free to show, you know, put them into the comments. If I don't get to them during this video, I always go back to the comments, especially if you tag me on Facebook. But even on YouTube, I will get your comments. And so if you have questions, comments, whatever, please put them there. Don't hesitate. This is your chance to ask me. You can always private message me on Facebook, by the way, too. So I'm very accessible. You can even email me at jennifer at artoffreedom.me. That's dot M-E. Um, anyway, so back to, back to the topic here. The tension keeps coming back you because you have a misunderstanding of what it is, basically. You think it's a physical thing. You think it's a thing that's located here specifically in one area of your body. Just because you feel it there doesn't mean that that's all there is to it. And what you usually do when you have tension is you focus on that body part and you try to relax it. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> that's what we do. It's the way we've been trained. It's the way we've been taught. Our teachers say, relax your wrist, relax your wrist. So what do you do? You focus on your wrist and you try to relax it. That's a temporary partial solution that doesn't work. 
it might work if you focus on it a lot over a long period of time, like years maybe, or maybe less than that. But if you do it that way, you know what? You might, if you're lucky, be able to let go of the tension in that one area, but you are not solving the problem. You're just changing how it feels here. You're maybe getting a little more movement flexibility here, but by focusing on that body part, the tension in the rest of you is still there. And actually, sometimes when you focus on a body part, you're actually increasing you, your overall tension. You can kind of let it go and release it a little bit in some areas, but at what cost? You cannot solve overall mind-body tension, which is what it always is, by focusing on a specific part. It just doesn't work that way. And that's why the tension in your body parts keeps coming back because you need to address the whole. So my Art of Freedom method for conscious living and masterful artistry is a holistic system that recognizes what the Alexander Technique teaches us, that everything is connected. You cannot separate the mind and the body from your emotions, and you cannot separate any of those from your experience of who you are and who you are in the system of the universe that we live in. Everything is interconnected and you kind of have to take it all into account when you want to change something. I know that sounds dramatic and, and maybe idealistic and abstract, but it is absolutely real and practical once you realize the simple shift that you need to do in your thinking. That changes everything. Let's go back to our experiment from a little bit ago where I asked you to look away from the screen. Go ahead and do that again now. Just look away for the, from the screen right now. I bet something changed in you just from looking away from the screen. I bet you maybe even relaxed a little bit. Maybe because your focus opened up a little bit and you shifted your attention. You changed your the way you are thinking for a moment. Now let's add on to that. You're looking away from the screen. Now go within yourself for a moment, scan your body again, and see what it wants to tell you. Maybe tension or pain is showing up. Just say hello to it if that's the case. Oh, that's you again, hi. <laughs> say hello to the tension. Say hello to the body part that's talking to you. Say hello to the pain. Don't judge it, don't try to fix it, don't try to run away from it, don't think it's wrong, don't label it as bad. Just say hello, hi, I see you. And then let's move on, okay? Now I want you to get curious about something else. Can you continue to be curious about your system and what's going on inside of you? And instead of being curious about pain or tension or discomfort, can you wonder, is there a place in my body that feels a little less tense, a little less painful, a little less uncomfortable than those other places that aren't feeling that great? Is there a place in my body that feels relatively empty, easy, comfortable, maybe nothing much is going on there? If there is a place of relative ease, in your body that's showing up right now. Can you name that body part, stick it into the chat. Is there any easing happening in your body? Where are you noticing a little bit of easing compared to the places of tensing, of tension? There's always relative tension and relative ease in the body. But tension is loud and wants to capture your attention. Fine, listen to it for a moment, but then, and say thank you even. Thank you for talking to me. Now I need to move on and listen to the body parts that are quiet, like little toddlers just playing happily in the corner, not causing a fuss. They deserve your attention too. What's showing up for you that's just fine? And what happens to you when you notice another place of relative ease? Let something else show up. Is there another body part that feels relatively comfortable. So I'm seeing some 
body parts showing up, legs, arms, legs, hands, right knee. Yes, excellent, wonderful. So here's the thing, what you focus on, you get more of. If you focus on tension, you will get more of an experience of tension. If you focus on pain, you're gonna block the healing energy that heals it. You're gonna slow down the healing process and you're gonna notice your pain more. It's just, it's the way the brain works. We filter for what we believe is important and we actually create our experience of the next moment depending on what we think is important. That's a really complex topic. I'm not gonna go more deeply into that, but there's so much scientific research on this. This is not new age stuff. This is like as far away from that. If you're thinking this is a little woo-woo or you know, somatic, whatever, no, this is science. There is neuroscience, there is research, there's so much research on how the brain works and how the brain and the body functions and the nervous system and performance anxiety. Anxiety is such, the chemistry of anxiety. There's so much out there that is real science. So I can only give you the tiniest little bit here and hope that you're having an experience here of being able to shift your attention because that's where you can do something about your tension in a practical way that's instantaneous. So if you started, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if you continue to get curious about easing in your body, you will start to notice a little more easing. Sometimes it's very subtle, sometimes it's very tiny, but it's not about quantity. This is about the quality of your attention it's about the quality of your experience. It's about the quality of your presence that you bring to your violin that makes all the difference in the sound you produce, your facility with your technique, your musical expressiveness, your freedom in your body, your mind, your musical creativity, how you express yourself and share and communicate with your audiences, it all changes depending on what you're paying attention to and it's so simple if you're paying attention to easing and freedom and you've practiced this by the way this is a very important key point you may be able to do this shifting of attention right now when you're not playing your violin it's easy right you can pay attention to pain you can pay attention to a place where there is less pain or no pain right and then you can you know, sense that your experience is different, your system eases up, you feel a little freer than you did when you were paying attention to the pain, right? That's easy to do right now and it's instantaneous, but it's something that you need to learn how to do in a systematic way and practice it so that you get better control over your attention. That's what Alexander was alluding to when he talked about conscious constructive control of the individual. We're not learning how to have more control over te our technique. We're learning or our bodies. We're not trying to control our body parts. That's a mistake and you've probably been doing it most of your life, if not all of your life. Something goes wrong in your body part, you try to control it. You try to control the relaxing of it. No, don't do that. Don't try to control your body. Don't push yourself around. What you need is to go to the source of the problem which is not in your body at all. It's in your mind, it's how you're thinking. We need to develop more conscious, constructive, positive control over where we place our attention, over our minds. You need to have better control of your mind. And as a musician, you really know this. You need to have really good skills of concentration and focus. You need to know how to be playing the note you're playing. You know, you need to be focused on one note, the note you're playing, not worrying about what's coming up, the hard part coming up on the next page. You don't need to be thinking about the notes you just finished. Maybe you screwed up that passage again. No, your mind needs to be under control. You need to be on the note you're playing, but not with a kind of control that increases tension. And that's that's the thing we haven't learned. The way we tend to concentrate increases tension, but that's the wrong way to go about it. We need to learn how to focus in the present moment with a freedom of mind, body, spirit. 
We need to be playing the note we're playing with full awareness that does not exclude what came and what's coming up. You want to be aware of the notes coming up, but you need to be fully, completely in the present moment with the note that you're playing also. This takes tremendous skill and that takes so much practice. That's why we practice, basically to develop our ability to control our thoughts in the best possible way. The problem is that here's the, the major, major, major thing that people are missing. Everybody's missing this. <laughs> it's not so much about the content of your thinking and it's not about the quantity of practice time. It's about how you are actually using your brain. It's how you think. And I already alluded to this, I kind of said it already. You can think with a lot of intensity or you can think in a way that has an open-minded, open-bodied, open field of attention. There's an Alexander teacher from, from um, decades ago named Frank, Frank Pierce Jones. He talked about a unified field of attention. You want to learn how to bring your whole self, your whole mind-body self as a whole to your music making. As you pick up your instrument, as you raise your bow, as you play your scales, can you be fully present to how you're thinking, how you're moving, how you're being, and be aware of the space around you, the audience in front of you, the conductor in front of you, your stand partner reading the notes on the page. There are a gazillion things we need to be able to take into our awareness, including what's going on inside of you. Most of us can't do that because we haven't learned that it was important to do and we haven't been taught how to do it. Nobody is out there teaching how to do this. Alexander Technique is the only system I've ever come across that teaches you specifically how to get better control over your mind, body, self as a, as a whole and how to apply your whole self with this kind of open awareness, but very, very, very highly detailed specificity at the same time to exactly what you're doing in a way that makes things easier, not more intense. And Alexander Technique has traditionally been taught as a hands-on technique where you have to be in the phys same physical space as a teacher and they touch, use touch to, to uh, help you have a different experience of yourself and to teach you how you can bring a freer, more open, more relaxed, more aware self to an activity. And that's wonderful. For me personally, I have chosen to stop using touch, to stop using my hands when I teach Alexander Technique because I've found what I believe is a better way. I know people are gonna, if they see this, they're not gonna like my saying that, but that's my reality, it's been my experience. And I feel that Primal Alexander, which is a relatively new, it's actually not that new, it's been around for decades, um, the creator of Primal Alexander, which is a hands-free method of teaching Alexander technique, was created, as I said, by Mio Morales. And he's been experimenting with this for decades, with himself and with his students. And I've been training how, I've been learning, I've been in training to learn Primal Alexander for nearly seven years, well, it was about six and a half years now. And I've been teaching this for years to my students because I want my students to have the tools to know exactly how to think and move in this kind of free, open way with ease and creativity on their own. I want from day one, I want my students to know exactly what they can do for themselves. So they're not dependent on my presence. They're not dependent on my hands. They're not de dependent on feeling a certain experience in a lesson. I work exclusively online now with people all over the world with professional violinists, amateur violinists. I work with people who play any instrument, any skill level. And by the way, if you're not a violinist, I think you're pretty, you're seeing that this applies to you too. Everything I've said today applies to all kinds of musicians, not just violinists. 
hands-free Alexander technique empowers you to take charge of your own mind and to learn how to observe your own self and to experiment within the very clear system. And it is so simple. Maybe what I'm saying sounds really complex and like it would be hard to do or hard to learn. It's the easiest thing in the world. It's not more difficult than what I've already done with you today, where I suggested that you could notice pain or tension and you can shift your awareness to relative, relatively less pain, less tension, more ease in your body. That's the foundation upon which this is built. And then Primal Alexander has a step-by-step -step method that very simply, very easily takes you all the way from just sitting in a chair noticing things about your body to being able to practice your violin in a way that is incredibly efficient, very, very, very effective. You can get so much more done in so much less time when your mind isn't cluttered by extraneous unhelpful thoughts and your body is therefore not hindered, not blocked by unnecessary tension that you didn't even know was there or by tension in body parts that you do know are there. And you're not going to waste time trying to play with a free wrist or, or you know, chain, play with less tension in certain body parts because that's not the way to do it. It's so much easier, so much faster, so much more effective and improves everything about your technique when you approach it as a whole. Wouldn't it be great if you could let go of all the tension in your whole system instantly? You can do this and you can learn this instantly. Alexander himself said, you could quote, you can change the habits of a lifetime in an instant if you use your brains, but nobody wants the discipline, he also said. It is a discipline. I can teach you my system so quickly, so easily, and everybody gets it. That's why I offer 100% money back guarantees on my intro programs, because it works for everybody. All you need to do is follow my systematic process that gives you these awareness etudes. They're very simple movement etudes without your instrument. Do my intro programs. People don't even use their instruments because it's all about this instrument, this whole body-mind instrument. You learn how to use this better, everything you do with your violin gets better and easier. All you need to do is a few minutes, it's like five minutes a day, of awareness etudes systematically, a little bit twice a day. So you're building up a strong neural network for a new way of thinking and moving that lets go of that tension that's getting in your way. You do that every day you get better at it. You develop this skill so that you can bring a free, open, flexible, movable, effortless body to your actual violin playing. And the more you do that, the more confident you get because it works. What you think is what you get. You can have an intention and more often than ever before, you can execute on your intention it works. You can play what you're imagining. There's a whole process to have a musical idea and, and your body just carries it out when there isn't interference of tension in the way. It's just logical. It's how the mind-body works, but we haven't learned how it works. So I'm here to teach you the specifics. Now in this video, I've just given you a broad overview, overview of what's possible. But I do want you to know that I have intro programs periodically, not regularly. I never really know when the next one is going to be. And right now I'm offering a specific introductory program specifically for violinists. It's a special edition. I don't know if I'm going to do it again. This is maybe a one-time offer, really. I, I, last time I did a musician's mind-body breakthrough, I haven't offered that again. This is a similar program, but it is for violinists specifically. And we're starting soon. Um, what I, I just wanna tell you about what it is and how it works. And I'm also offering a 10% discount to anybody who types the word tension into the chat. That's just a way for me to know that you're interested and we can get in touch with each other. Um, I'll tell you about all the details if you reach out to me. 
You can reach out to me on Facebook Messenger. You can send me an email to jennifer at artoffreedom.me. Um, and then we'll talk about the details and whether this program would be right for you personally. If you're a professional and you just feel like there's something missing like I used to feel like, and you want to get to that next level of technical success, or you know you have some anxiety and nothing you've tried worked, Maybe your body just feels uncomfortable. You've been going to massages every week. You go to the chiropractor, you go to physical therapy, you go to the doctor, you're contemplating surgery. Oh, please, please, please try this before you do that. I cannot tell you how many people I've worked with who have been able to stop all that and save hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars and prevent surgeries because they finally realized that they were just going about it wrong. Those people who do those specific modalities, those specific techniques, those things can be helpful, but they're not gonna get to the root of your tension issues. They're just not. And no violin teacher is gonna be able to help you with this either. I'm just gonna say it bluntly. Unless they are very special and understand how the mind-body self is a whole and that tension starts in the mind, not in the body, Music teachers don't understand this. They don't know this because their teachers didn't know that. And you're just not going to find this anywhere else. Um, I, again, I'm, it's like I'm biased. You may think, well, Jennifer's just pushing her program, but it's the truth. And I can just say that in all honesty because, I mean, maybe there's something out there I've never heard of that's totally possible. But the more I do this, and I've been teaching this for many years, I've taught this to hundreds of musicians. I have so many testimonials. If you want to find them, go to my website. It's www.artoffreedom.me. Um, so that's my website. You can find out my whole biography as a musician. You can just find all kinds of stuff on my website if you want to learn more about me and read the testimonials. It's just, this is groundbreaking. It is, it is a breakthrough program. It can transform your life, my students typically say this has changed their lives. It's like a miraculous thing. I am not exaggerating. It's what happened to me and this is why I'm teaching it because it totally changed my life and my violin playing. So the Violin Tension Tamer program is my introductory program that, as I said, I'm offering it now and I may not offer it again. It's a combination of a private coaching session with me. You do not need to bring your violin. You don't need to expose yourself in front of me or anybody. Um, nobody has to hear you play in case that's a fear of yours. Most of us are a little self-conscious about playing for people we don't know, people with you know an expert background. You don't need to play for me. I don't need to hear you play. It's irrelevant how you play. I don't care about anybody's skill level. You can be the best violinist in the world and I can help you. And you can be the worst in the world and I can help you. I don't care about your skills. Okay, so you get a private coaching session with me where I just connect with you on Zoom and we talk about what's going on for you. And then I help you to apply what you learn in the self-study course. There is a three-week jumpstart program. It's called the Musician's Advantage Jumpstart. You get that three-week three -week, self-study program. And then when we meet, I kind of make sure you're on the right track with it. If you have questions, you know, I can help you with that. Um, I can teach you how to apply it to your unique situation with your violin. If you have performance anxiety or pain or um, whatever you want to work on, we make it personal. So there's the private coaching, the self-study. And then um, not everybody wants a group experience, but if you do, this is like the best group. that <laughs> It's so fun to connect with other musicians like you who have the same issues, you're working on the same thing, people from around the world. It's going to be a small group. It's intimate. It's confidential. Um, we have some live group classes and videos and things that you can learn from. All kinds of different ways to learn. And again, 100% money back guarantee. It works if you do the awareness etudes a little bit every day, guaranteed. So that is starting on Saturday. So, and today is already Tuesday. So please reach out to me immediately. Reach out to me as soon as you see this video. If you want the 10% discount, just type the word tension into the comments and then let's connect to make sure that 
Um, you get all the details, the specific information about how the program works, including you know, specific dates, the investment level, all that I will share with you if you reach out to me. Okay, um, I think that's all I wanted to tell you. That's pretty much it. Of course, I also do multi-month private coaching programs. If you just want to dive all in, you know this is for you, you know you need to learn this. So just get in touch with me and we can talk about that. I'm going to hop over to the comments now because I see things coming up. Um, hey, Vicki. Oh, oh, thank you so much for this. Vicki says it's a great course for life. Thanks, Jennifer. I'm so, 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 so happy you wrote that and that you just had a really great experience, Vicki. You changed so much. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, Lori, tension. Okay, great. Yes, thank you for putting the word tension in there. You will get a discount if you want to do this. Absolutely, I will reach out to you or message me right now and we can chat later today. I will send you the information, the details, and make this work for you. Again, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to just throw anything into the chat here. If you're watching the replay, same goes for you. Put the word tension in. If you want that 10% discount, I will honor that all the way through Friday. Friday is the last day to register. That's April 1st. And no, I am not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's April Fool's Day, but I'm serious. Friday is the last day to register for this. We actually start on Saturday. You will get access to the self-study course and the private Facebook group where you know you get extra support. Oh, it's a 30-day program, but I'm also giving a bonus of two extra weeks. So it's really a six-week program. It doesn't take tons of time. It's not hard. It's for anyone, but it is super effective and can totally change your life and your playing. I cannot say better things about the Alexander technique and specifically primal Alexander, which is actually really different from hands-on Alexander technique. If you've done any hands-on Alexander technique, primal Alexander is pure Alexander. It goes back to the origins of what Alexander did for himself when he did not have the hands-on support of a teacher. So this is a self-empowering way to teach yourself how to help yourself with the Alexander Technique without my hands. It's not confusing. It's super simple, easy to do, and guaranteed to work. So um, can resolving tension help the tremor in my right arm? I just saw that question by Lori. Thank you for asking that. Yes, it absolutely can. Of course, everybody is unique and there are always exceptions to everything, but I'll just tell you, I've got an essential tremor that was diagnosed in my early 20s. My hand, I don't know if you could see it, but there's a, yes, of course you could see it when I put it, my hand up this close. This is my tremor. This is my right arm, just like what you're talking about. <laughs> so yes, it absolutely helps. One of the worst things as a violinist, as I, I'm sure you know, is to get on stage, you're playing in front of people, it's a quiet section and um, your tremor shows up and you're terrified that everybody can hear it and see it and um, that's scary. I know what that's like because I got it. And I've also learned how to think in such a way. Now I can't I can't like demonstrate right now to make it dis disappear. But when I do my constructive thinking for myself, that's what we do in Primal Alexander. Um, when I really do good work, on myself and maybe I do 15, 20 minutes of awareness etudes, like I described earlier, connecting my thinking with my body and calming my whole neuromuscular system. When I do that and I pay attention, sometimes the tremor is completely gone, like completely gone. I'm not worried about my tremor anymore. It goes away when I, I, it's like, I know what to do about it when I care. Like right now, I don't care that I have this tremor. It doesn't matter. Um, but when I care, when I perform, when I record, when I'm playing for people, if I know that in advance and I take the time to pay attention and take care of myself the way I know how, the tremor is either completely gone or it's not an issue. I start playing and it's just not an issue. And I've taught many people with tremors how to deal with their tremors. I have a harpist in my advanced group right now who has a tremor and it's basically gone for her. Uh, I just had a cellist come into my group, my introductory program the last time around with a mind-body breakthrough. 
the cellist with a tremor asked the same question before joining. And I said the same thing I'm saying to you that yes, he took the program and it was a few weeks afterwards where he said that huge, significant reduction in his experience of the tremor. Now, I can never like guarantee um, anything personal. Like I can't guarantee that somebody's pain is going to disappear. Um, just like I can't guarantee that your tremor is going to disappear within the six weeks. But I can guarantee that you will have tools to help yourself with it and that the, your experience of it will improve, it will get better. Um, and again, it's not so much about quantity, uh, it's about learning the tools that take you in the direction that you wanna go in and having a, a clear, obvious experience that you're going in the direction of more ease, less tension and healing. So the answer to that is yes. And again, I'm so glad you asked because so many people have come to me before asking me about their tremors, and um, I'm sure this is useful for other people to hear this. So let me just pop here, see. Oh, Christina says I'm crying just hearing about others who have, <sighs> sending you lots of love, really. Everybody out there, by the way. I do this because I love it. I do this work because it has, like I have said this, I don't know how many times already today, but it just keeps coming to my mind. The Alexander Technique has completely, totally changed my life in the best ways. Mentally, I mean, I'm, I used to be terrified of speaking in front of people, believe it or not, before the Alexander Technique. I was so scared to speak that I wouldn't talk on stage ever. <laughs> it was like I would make everybody else do it if we had to talk before a performance. I would totally say, no way, I'm not talking in front of people. When I was a teenager, my mother had to make all my phone calls because I was so shy. Uh, I cannot even tell you how, I mean, that's just an example of how, I mean, I love talking to my audiences now. It's changed my life emotionally. I'm so much happier, freer. It's not just changed my violin technique. It has changed my relationships, my relationship to, to everything and everyone. So, you know, I don't say that so much in my advertising because you know you you're here because you want to improve your violin playing but you know play, improving your violin playing is great but can you imagine just feeling more confident as a person not having so much social anxiety anymore when you go into a room full of people you just like want to connect with everybody and <laughs> it's fun um your self-esteem goes up you just feel better about yourself because you have more control over your your mind your thoughts your emotions and everything you do so yeah thank you christina oh no you're not too old i just signed up a student who's 85 and i don't even i don't think you're 85 yet are you I had a student, my oldest has been 90. I had a student who was 90. He was a trumpet player and he was great. It was fun having him. Nobody's too old. You're not too old. And the proof is that neuroscientists have discovered that the brain is what they call plastic. We always thought that the brain, you know, at a certain age, it, it was kind of set in stone. Like your personality is what it is and your brain is the way it is. And then neurons die off and you lose it. <laughs> Like, no, that's all totally wrong. You keep growing until it, it's like you're either tending towards more growth in life or you're to tending towards, you know, an earlier death. But you get to choose. You get to choose which way you want to go. And I choose to keep growing. And the brain, you keep making new neural connections all the time. So why not choose to make those neural connections that, make you happier and take the tension out of your system. Even if it's just a little bit, it can mean everything to know how to do it. So you can keep, you can keep improving and keep growing. You're never too old. 70, that's nothing. <laughs> My boyfriend is gonna be 70 in July. Hey, I don't care about people's ages. It's about what's on the inside. You're not too old, nobody's too old. That said, some people are too young for my work, <laughs> right? I don't work with kids usually. Um, sometimes I'll take a special teenager, but very, very rarely. I love working with adults, so <laughs> never too old. Okay, um, let me see if there are any other questions. Oh, thank you, Vicki, for seconding that. She says, never too old to enhance our life experience, what she just said. <laughs> Thanks, Vicki. So true. Um, Beverly has a question. 
If you have a medical diagnosis, example, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, can this help? Yes. Yes. In fact, um, I think I have a testimonial. I don't think she says it actually in the testimonial, but I have a student who, who has, I have, I've had lots of people with chronic pain and some with fibromyalgia. Um, yes, this totally help. It, it can absolutely help guarantee. I always say guaranteed because I can guarantee that it will help. <laughs> actually, I can't guarantee it's going to go away, but I'm thinking of this one student who has had chronic pain and was diagnosed with chronic pain, you know, multiple spinal injuries, all kinds of stuff. And her doctor told her she would be in pain forever. I've had two like this, actually, two of them in my group right now. The doctor actually told them they would always be in pain. If that's not the worst thing a doctor can ever do, I don't know what is. That's what they were told. They took my program and the one I just thought of right away had chronic pain for like 20 years and it's basically gone. And it did not take that long for it to go away. She's still in my program now after a couple of years because she keeps improving and she loves it. Um, she loves coming to class every Saturday for my advanced group. Um, but truly people almost universally start to notice a reduction in their pain no matter what their situation is, no matter what their diagnosis is. From day one, you learn how to think in a way that has you respond differently to your pain, which, which reduces your experience of the pain and allows your healing mechanisms to kind of do their thing with more ease. There's a healing energy in our systems that is allowed to flow more easily when you stop blocking it with tension. So again, there, I, I am not trained to give my medical diagnoses. That's not my expertise, but I do take people with all kinds of issues. And um, yeah, fibromyalgia is one that I'm, I'm very familiar with and I've seen it help people so much. I just thought of another person, another violinist who uh, was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and basically she's pain free. And it doesn't have to take that long. That's a, the, the, the timing is very unique. It depends on like, how long you've had something and it, also, it depends on a lot of things. Um, some people, like I said, with long-term chronic pain find relief within days or weeks. And some people notice that there's an improvement that just keeps happening steadily over a longer period of time. But Again, this program is guaranteed 100% or your money back. You will notice improvement or your money back if you do the work, right? That's the honest try guarantee. I give you my best teaching. You take it, you try it, you do it a few minutes every day as prescribed. If you do that, you come to a live group session, you do your private coaching session with me. Um, Actually, there are no re refunds after you do the private coaching session with me. But if you do what I tell you to do in the self-study course consistently and it, you don't get value, no problem giving your money back. And I've never had to do that before, which says a lot because I've taught this to many people. <laughs> uh, oh, another one. Thank you, Nina. Nina says, brief testimonial. Your coaching has made me a better violinist and a happier one. I love the ease that has become part of my playing. Thank you so much, Nina. Thank you for posting that. Um, I'm seeing the time. I've gone already gone over an hour. I was trying to make this short. Ha ha ha. I'm so not good at stopping <laughs> because I'm so excited about all of this. I could just talk and talk and talk like forever, but I will stop now. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Thank you for your comments. If you're watching the replay, again, I always come back and check the comments. I will answer your questions. Um, again, if you want 10% off of the Violin Tension Tamer program, just type the word tension into the comments. You've got it. 10% off is yours. Reach out to me. Send me a private message on Facebook. We start Saturday. Registration closes Friday. It's a 30-day program with two bonus weeks. It's really a six-week program right now. I might not offer this again. This is the only time I've done it for violinists, and um, I tend to work with musicians of all kinds. This time around, it's just for violinists and violists, I should say. Um, yeah, so reach out to me or send me an email if you prefer to jennifer at artoffreedom.me. That's dot M-E. So anything's possible. Just open up your mind and your body, your whole self to the possibility that things could get dramatically better. Your violin technique can 
change dramatically. Just, just open up to the possibility. Give it a shot. You have nothing to lose. Hope to see you very soon. Well, lots of love to all of you, and I'll see you in my Facebook group, The Musician's Advantage with Jennifer Rod Franklin. Bye.